Hi there, uh, families. Happy uh, November. I think this is the first video I've made in November. So uh, extensions of hellos to you and November. I am currently in the library, so that's why I'm kind of just looking around in my new surroundings. Uh, this week has actually been filled with a lot of really cool learning. In math, we've moved into data literacy. Um, and so this week, we were talking about sampling random uh, and various samples. And then we started talking about qualitative and quantitative data. Uh, so yesterday, the students did um, tabletop activities where they had to create um, sentences, whether they were qualitative or quantitative, and then uh, go and answer other people's surveys. Um, and on Monday, Tuesday, uh, or Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we did random sampling. So they we had all of the students' names on a, a wheel virtually. And uh, we hit the, the, the wheel 20 times and they had to tally uh, how many times each name came up in the 20. And then we did 25 uh, times. And then the last time we did 50. And then they actually had to look at all 95 learning opportunities. And they kind of got to see that over the course of time, things started to even out. Um, ironically, uh, right? And that's just sort of how it does work from an odds perspective is that in the beginning, certain people, especially we have 25 students in class, but we only did 20 spins. So mathematically, we knew already five people weren't going to get in, but some people uh, had their name hit multiple times. Um, and then at 25, again, we saw the same thing where multiple people didn't get have their name selected uh, and some people. And then oh, when we did 50, um, again, there were still some people that didn't have their name selected. But when we started looking at all of the numbers, the numbers started to start to even out, obviously far from perfect. Uh, but you have your high people and you had one low person and then you had a bunch of people that kind of sat plus or minus in the middle. So that was really cool learning uh, for the students to be a part of from a language perspective. Um, uh, we are working on our book still. We're a little bit behind, but there's just so many amazing connections that the class is making. Um, and so we are going to continue to work on that. Today, uh, again, we're working on being more descriptive writers. Orally speaking, uh, they have really uh, pretty expansive vocabulary. And I think that with the virtual learning that a lot of them did for over the course of one or two parts of the year, there's just so much talking. And so they're confident to, to speak, but less comfortable writing. And, and that's going to come out in some of their progress reports too, is, is that from a reading and writing perspective, some of them have a lot of ground to catch up on and that's okay. That's where we're at. And that's where we're going to, uh, to work towards to get to a point where we are able to work at a higher level. Um, and that's going to take time. There's going to be some students who are really working incredibly hard um, and, and, and all of us should be working really hard. Uh, but I'm really excited for the learning um, that we have done and that we are going to continue to do. Uh, in saying that, so yeah, they've been working on using some vocabulary from our book, but then creating their own sentences um, on their own. So like taking and connecting to the book and then creating uh, yesterday, for example, two really cool stories. Um, one of the words is shimmery. And then that kind of got into a conversation about jewelry. And then I started talking about Swarovski and they have an earring called the Bella earring, which then made a connection about uh, one of the students who's a dancer. And she spoke about how she has crystals on one of her Irish dancing dresses. And it was just this really interesting conversation. The word was shimmery. The original context was talking about moon light water so on and so forth and it kind of got into this other conversation but it was just taking this word and then introducing it into their own learning their own context and where did we go from there and that was kind of neat um and so that was one of the two stories and i won't indulge you in all of it but that was a really interesting piece of learning uh the students did a quiz uh this week for their book but it's a, a new experience for me as well. And this is some the part of the IB learning that I'm, I'm learning to do better at and to grow and evolve with. The students actually wrote their own quiz. So what happened was I asked them to write a question on a post-it note um, and then I collected them and then I wrote them down on a piece of paper or I wrote them, I typed them out and I sort of, a lot of the, they asked similar questions. So it came down to about seven questions. 
but the questions were really quite uh, deep in thought and, and they had uh, taken themes from the book on their own and incorporated them into their own questions. So I had a blast with that because um, it's just the students taking part in their own learning and taking charge of their learning. And uh, I, I, I was blown away. I loved it, actually. Um, so it was just something new, something that I can do to to evolve as a teacher. And I'm, I'm digging the learning and, uh, and, and watching them evolve. Uh, social studies, the grade fives have been working on learning about the three levels of government. And yesterday they had to uh look up seven things that each level of government does so for example municipal uh garbage collection snow removal parks bylaws uh provincially you've got health education licenses so on and so forth um and then federally um you're looking at your passports your citizenship your uh, military all those and then today i was gone actually i'm here but i was doing a course um and uh so hopefully the hope is they actually the grade fives were supposed to be creating uh child friendly laws so they were looking at what each level of government was responsible for and if they could create five of their own laws for municipal for provincial and for federal what would they be so uh taking what they learned yesterday and then putting that into uh what they did hopefully today uh, again i am in a course so i've been busy working here uh, and the grade fours, they're learning about the political regions uh, and the physical regions in Canada. So yesterday, the Western Cordelia, so they were talking about more the West Coast of Canada. And today they were talking about the interior plains. Uh, so again, I was here. I wasn't in there. This was the work I left for them. If it wasn't completed, that's something that we will get to next week. But again, it's sort of just taking uh, very current information and having some fun with it and them taking charge of their own learning. They're working collaboratively with partners um, and they're researching things that matter to them, which is awesome. So awesome. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Uh, enjoy hopefully what looks to be beautiful weather outside. And I look forward to uh, next week's learning with your children. Again, if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I've had lots of parents communicate with me lately, uh, whether their son or their daughter is sick. I'm always grateful for that. Um, and I actually, the student who communicated about her dress, the mom sent me a picture uh, of the dress with her at her dance competition in Toronto. And I thought that that was really cool. We actually enjoyed it as a class this morning and uh, they were able to make that connection and it kind of brought the learning full circle, which was awesome. So I'm not really sure what I was doing with my hands there, but it's all good. Have a great weekend. Ciao, everybody. Bye.